is Sarah Joseph here, author of Choreography of Awakening, international speaker, former Olympic figure skating coach, and founder and creator of Imagined Life, a revolutionary path to mastery of self that leads towards creation of your masterpiece, the life you were born to live according to your life's blueprint. Welcome to Professionals on Air podcast, a podcast where we discuss how to walk, talk, live, and grow authentically as professional in the 21st century. It is my intention to bring you diverse and exciting speakers and prove that no matter where we come from and what we do, there are clear laws that work through us that we can tap into to create what we desire. Today, I have the pleasure and honor to introduce you to my amazing guest, Dr. Torian Salary, the professor of, professional, of personal growth. He is the minister of Hillcrest Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and the life coach. He has dedicated his career to helping transform the lives that he comes into contact with. He has spoken to over a quarter million college and high school students in his quest to make sure that students leave school with greater chance of becoming a success story. And I am so excited to pick his brain on how he does that. Welcome, Torian. Thank you so much for your generosity and gift of time and wisdom to share with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Sophia, for having me on the show. Uh, I'm excited to be here, even if it's just virtually. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share this, this virtual space with you. Me too. Tell us a little bit about how you started this business. How did you become the minister? I started preaching at a very young age. I was 15, in fact, and I grew up in Florida. And just to kind of do something different, you know, I was the kid that had to go to church with mom every Sunday. And I didn't really feel like I had a lot going on. I just, I would go to church and maybe take a nap. And so my mom told me one day, you've got to be more active, find something that you can do in church. And I've always had a passion for speaking in front of people. I was a little nervous, but I've always had that gift of communication. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to try to go for maybe doing a a small sermon one day. And it was Youth Sunday, and I volunteered to do the sermon. It was maybe 10 minutes at the most. But I got on stage. We probably had 200 people in the audience. And I spoke, and I was nervous, and my voice was cracking, and I was my knees were buckling. <laughs> but, I, but I knew. I knew that this was something that I possibly could do for the future. And for the next 10, 15 years, I was running from it. Eventually, I think God said it, it's time to surrender to the cause. And so that's that's kind of when I came back to preaching and started getting into the youth ministry, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and was blessed to have this opportunity to be the minister of the Hillcrest Church of Christ. That's amazing. I love how you said like <laughs> surrendering to yeah. it. You got the call <laughs> and surrendered to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can only run for so long before you you have to face that. You know what? This is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And once I once I had that realization, nothing else mattered. I know that this was this was something from God and I had to I had to surrender. I had to face the music and do what I know he wanted me to do. I I so hear you. I so admire you. I, I mean, so many people just do something that would put bread on the table and they don't yeah. follow their heart and are so miserable in their lives because they're not following their calling. Right. And you answered the calling of your heart. Yeah. And it's not something that you see people do every day that you like right. meet a minister who is doing that. And I'm like, right. wow, this is like, <laughs> you look cool. Yeah. What you do is different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. One one thing that you said that I really like is a lot of people just do stuff to put bread on the table. And unfortunately, a lot of folks are in positions to where, you know, they until that until that calling comes, until that vision happens, 
you just got you have to do what you got to do to make sure your kids eat, make sure life is good. But I, I think I think the quicker you can find what you're supposed to do, it's no longer work and it's it's fun. And I wake up every day getting excited to come into the church office on Sunday morning. It's the happiest day of the week because I get to stand in front of 300 people in person and probably thousands that are tuning in online. And I get to share God's message and I don't look at it as work. I don't look at it as oh, here's another day of me having to do this. It's fun. And I get excited to do it every single day. And you are in the church office right now, too. I'm right here at the church right now, <laughs> <laughs> preparing for Sunday, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how, how powerful it is to be in a space of service and God at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you just being, I mean, I can just imagine serving your best self, serving God, serving people. I mean, yeah. it's just amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. So my question to you is, what does professionalism mean to you? That's a good question, Sophia. And that's a question I don't think many people give a lot of thought to. But uh, for me, professionalism, professionalism, it, it's almost like a standard. It, it's mm -hmm. almost like the norm, right? It's almost like how, how you're supposed to act in a quote unquote professional situation in a business environment and it's almost kind of not I don't want to use the word fitting in but it's almost uh, doing what you know you're supposed to do in that situation around other professional individuals and so I, I thought <laughs> I thought about that for a while and I just love the fact that the show is actually called the professionals and I knew that question was coming and uh, <laughs> it's it's a tough it's a tough question now we we know what it is but defining it is a different thing. And so that's what I would say. I think it's just kind of falling in line with the norm, the standard of doing things at your highest when you're around other people of similar uh, professional or, or caliber, if you will. Totally. <laughs> totally. I, so agree. I so agree with you. When I was invited to be the host of the show, too, And I was kind of pondering that question also. That's <laughs> what is professionals? And for me, the first thing that came in was like an athlete, right? Mm -hmm. It is an amateur athlete and it is a professional athlete. Yeah. And you may be competing at the, at the same level, but the professionals is like so much more mm -hmm. than just being an amateur. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that's very, still... that's a good example. Good analogy. Yeah, yeah, I, I love yeah. using analogies every time I speak, and <laughs> it, it helps people to think about it and relate and connect ideas. And but I never thought about that one: the amateur athlete and the professional athlete. Very good. Isn't that a big it, difference? Isn't it, it's it? a huge difference. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, so good example. What is what do you think is your biggest strength as the professional? I think my biggest strength is. <clears throat> Honestly, I think it's communication, being able to communicate with people mm -hmm. on a professional level. A as you've mentioned, I do life coaching. Of course, I'm the minister of a church. I work with groups to help them communicate better. So I do communication workshops around the country. And I think the strength that, that I've been given, uh, the, the capacity is to be able to help others through communication. And I think that's what led to a career as a minister. I think that's what led to a career as a motivational speaker. That's what led to a career as a life coach using, <clears throat> and you get this as well as a coach, using the gift of your communication, the power of your communication to change someone's life. And people don't realize how powerful words are and they are very powerful. Words speak life and they can also speak death. And I think if you use them the right way, you can change someone's life for the better. And so I would say my my strength, without a doubt, is the ability to articulate my thought in such a way that it leads to life over death. And what you just did was a perfect <laughs> example of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what would you say is your biggest weakness as a professional? Oh. I knew that. I knew that was coming too. I don't know. I'm not prepared for that. Um, you know what? 
it, that, that is a tough question. You know, you, you have to answer that in interviews for jobs and stuff, and no one ever wants to answer it because it makes you look bad. But I, I honestly, th- and I know this is probably a cliche answer, but for me, my biggest weakness is I think I'm very particular about how I like things done. And so that causes me to take on more than I can handle. Hmm. And instead of just delegating tasks to people and say, hey, you work on this, you work on that, I'd much rather sometimes say, let me just do it. And, you know, not, and at least I, I know it'll get done the way I like it, but I'll also know that I'm adding more stress and more work to my plate. And so I thought for years that is a weakness of mine and I've got to learn how to spread the love and delegate and get other people to, to buy in and help out versus trying to do 10 things at one time. Well, it really sounds kind of like a double-edged sport. At the <laughs> it <same> is. <laughs> and I think it a is. lot of the people, professionals, especially on entrepreneurs, could relate to that a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That that's it's a double-edged sword. You're right. What what has contributed to your success? Would be would you say luck, timing, a mentor? what you offer or the way you do business or mm-hmm. something else? I would say all of the above with the exception of luck. Um, <laughs> I love I, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I think timing contributes. I think having a mentor mm-hmm. contributes. I think what you offer contributes. I think people in your corner having a support team contributes. I, I don't, I don't believe in luck. And even though we say it, you know, it's kind of a cliche. It's kind of a habit. We tell people, hey, good luck, you know, good luck tomorrow without even thinking about what it means. And I don't I don't know that I believe in luck. I think I think when you're prepared. Opportunities happen and you're better positioned to do them or to master them. So if you call that luck. Uh, you know, great. I don't know that. I don't know that I would believe in luck. So I would say all of the, all that you just named, except luck. <laughs> I so agree with you on that one. And I remember when I coached my skaters, and yeah. people would come and say, "Good luck." We're like, we don't need your luck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, um, yeah. And I love like my teachers would would always say that spirit meets you halfway. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, very But true. You put in that work, mm-hmm. spirit will meet you halfway. It's mm-hmm. not luck. We can't yeah. call that luck for sure. Nope. nope, nope. And again, if you're prepared, when opportunities come, you're gonna you're gonna crush them every time. If you're not prepared and you happen to do good either way, then that's when people say, Oh, that was luck. Like, oh, you got lucky, right? But if you're prepared for whatever is thrown your way, you don't need luck because you're prepared for it. Well, someone said, good is the enemy of great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. That's good. Good is the enemy What, of great. Do you have a ritual or practice to grow more in professionalism? Do I have a ritual or practice? Yeah. I do. Um, I, and I don't do it so much, but I, I'm working on making it more of a habit. And I'll be honest, I, I'm not a huge reader. And I know someone once said that's it's you're irresponsible if you don't read. <laughs> so I'm trying to read more and I wish I could turn my, my laptop around so you can see my office. Um, but I don't want to mess up the connection here. But I have a ton of books in my office and consistently I'll read maybe one book and I have thousands of books in here. So I'm trying to make that a habit, you know, every day, pick up a book and read a couple of chapters because there's so much knowledge and so much information out there that I'm I'm staring at looking at my bookshelf right now, but I'm not tapping into. And so that's something I'm trying to do. And that's something I'd put out as advice. Mm-hmm. Hey, take take an hour out of your day to learn. And if books aren't your thing, watch an educational documentary, watch a movie, you know, go listen to a lecture tune into a podcast, right? Do what you have to do to learn something new every day. Well, now that you mentioned books, I have to ask you what your favorite one is. Yeah. Or yeah. what are you reading right now? <laughs> so right now, I'm actually reading a book called, um, it's, I just put it up. It is, I think it's just called Preacher. I think that's the name of the book. 
And it just talks about all of the elements of preaching and leadership and how to manage a church. And so many people think preaching is just getting on a stage and delivering a sermon, but it's also about, it's communication, it's public speaking. So it's well, about- I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah. You it's won't about, believe what I'm reading right now. <laughs> what are you reading right now? <laughs> it's cool. I don't know, can, can you see that? Keys to Church Health, wow. <laughs> I might have that book somewhere in my library. <laughs> there's so there's so many things. You just show up on Sunday at a church and hear the man or hear the woman speak, and that's all you see. You don't see everything that it took to get to that point. You don't know that the fact that they're trying to quote something from memory, but also assess the room. They're trying to make sure their audience gets what they need. They're trying to keep track of time. They're trying to do all of these things at one time, and it comes out, hopefully, it comes out very beautifully in a 25, 35, 45 minute sermon. So I have a sense that your mm -hmm. biggest struggle <clears throat> was the reason behind your why in doing what you do. Okay. So what was that struggle and how did you overcome it? So, the, so t okay, tell me again, the struggle behind- Behind your why, behind okay. why you do what you do. Yeah. Because there had to be some time. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I'm just guessing that there had to be something that was that you hit some really challenging moment yeah. and then overcoming that yeah. became something of a mission. I have to share and teach others with that. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, I think you're accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're accurate. Majority, and if you can ask people in my church, majority of my sermons, my messages are on faith and are on overcoming obstacles and adversity. A lot of my messages are. And I think I'm doing that not on purpose, but because I had to overcome adversity. And so now that I know from experience what it's like, I feel compelled to tell other people. And uh, I hit a rock. I hit a rough time in my life. I have a wife. And at that time, I had two children. I have three total now. At that time, I had two children and uh, I lost my job and I lost my job again. So I lost my job. Six months went by, didn't have a paycheck coming in the house. Uh, people said, well, how did you survive? How did you eat every day? And, and again, it, it wasn't because I believed in luck. It was because I believed in God and God took care and provided. Mm -hmm. Six months later, I was able to get a job. And then a few months after that, I lost my job again for six months exactly and so there was something about this six months that he, yeah <laughs> and i i didn't know <clears throat> i didn't know what what i was supposed to learn in that period uh in that time frame so i used to get up every day and walk after i would drop my children off at school i would walk around the local park for hours just walking trying to what what are you trying to show me god what is the message what am i what am i supposed to learn because i'm you know i'm, I'm college educated i got degrees i i'm very hireable but no one would hire me and so i thought to myself am i doing something wrong i fell into a depression mm -hmm. i prayed every day and eventually god answered those prayers and put me in a position better than i've ever had in my life and so in that moment, I had to overcome some adversity. I had to figure out how to make, uh, how to pay a bill with zero dollars in the bank. I had mm -hmm. to figure out how to put food on my, my kitchen table and didn't go to work. And I had to learn the hard way to do things. And eventually God said, now that I have you isolated, now that I've removed all the distractions from your life and I can get you to focus on me, he started to replenish everything that I lost. And from that moment, I have not looked back since. And so now I feel like I have a, a duty to tell everyone else, hey, if you're going through a rough time in your life, it's okay. It's expected. God is trying to position you to do something or expose you to a different part of your, your mind that you haven't tapped into so that he can bless you like never before. And so sometimes going through that, that storm is necessary so that you can enjoy the sunshine. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, That's absolutely. That's really powerful. Yeah. Thank you. And it's like we all have this kind of a blueprint that yeah. we all have to learn the specific lessons yeah. that put in front of us.
Yeah. I have a challenging question for you. <laughs> okay. From the audience. Okay. And so the question is, how do you in practical life align what you know about success with letting your kids be who they are and mm -hmm. let them learn the lesson of success on their own? That is a challenging question. And uh, I can't quite see the name, obviously. So thank you for whoever uh, offered that question. <laughs> So I I do that exact thing. I I've and we as parents we we live the lesson we live the life, and so we have a heart for our children and we want them to avoid some of the same mistakes we've made or we want them to learn how we had to learn, and so I do that very same thing and I will, I will and I hate it sounds kind of mean I will let my kids fail at certain things I I will and I hope that doesn't sound bad I hope <laughs> hope everybody understands. I will purposely let my, and I will see them going down the wrong path and I'll let it happen as long as I'm not endangering them or, you know, it's going to lead to them going to jail or something drastic. I'll let them kind of fail so that they can get up, look back at daddy and see that, okay, now that, now it's time for the lesson. Let, let's talk about what you did wrong and what we could have done differently. And I do that because, not because I'm trying to compare myself to God or anything like that. But that's how I had to learn. I had to fall down and I had a boo-boo on my leg and I had to ask God, why is this happening to me? And then God said, okay, now that I have your attention, <laughs> now the teaching can begin. And so I try to use that same philosophy for my children. Let them fall, get a little bit of a boo-boo on the knee, dust themselves off. And when they're ready to learn, they come back and say, okay, daddy, I tried it that way. It didn't work. Can you help me out? And I tell my kids all the time, yeah, absolutely. One quick example is I have a son who, high school student, very independent, doesn't like to be, you know, helped. And grades in school started to drop down. And I'm watching his grades fall. And I tell him all the time, listen, if you ever need some help, I can help you. I can help you study. I can help you do this or do that. And he's always like, nope, I got it. I got it. And so I don't push it. I say, okay, do your thing. Grades start to drop a little bit more. And once he realizes that he's in a position where he can't help himself, he comes back and says very humbly, <laughs> okay, I, I can't do it. Can you help me? And my response is, I've been waiting here all along. All you had to do was ask, and I'm going to drop everything that I'm doing to help you. And, he, and he's starting to learn that lesson. And again, I think that's how God does us. God says, I'm here to help you. Sometimes we say, nope, God, I'm okay. I got it. Like, I'm a big boy, I can handle it. And we realize we can't handle it. And so we run back to God and say, okay, God, I, I need you to step in. I need you to help out. And God says, yeah, that's I've been here waiting. So let's let the learning begin. And so that's kind of what I do. Yeah, that's a good question. That's very powerful. That's, I think, that's, in today's world, we're so mm -hmm. overprotecting the kids. Yeah. How are they going to be able to stand yeah. in any adversity yep. if we like take care of everything? So yep. I think that's a really great lesson, very powerful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. What is what is the best advice you have ever received? Oh man, the best advice I have ever received yeah. is to to I don't even know how to phrase it, but to never never stop trying, never, st and I know that's super cliche, right, but never quit, never stop trying, and I'm a lifelong example, excuse me, I'm an example or an, or a test, a testament to that, that when you never stop trying, the, the sky, people say the sky is the limit, I don't believe that, I think beyond the sky is the limit, I think the sky is the limit to people who have only ever reached the sky, but if you keep trying and keep pushing and keep going, there's something beyond the sky that you can reach. And I, I feel in my spirit that you have to keep trying. If you fall, you're supposed to fall. If you fail, you're supposed to fail a couple of times. Get up, dust yourself off and keep going. You do bad in school, take that bad grade, figure out how to make a better one the next time and keep going. You finish one degree and you feel like I've got a lot more in me, keep going. <laughs> like just keep going and get everything you can out of life because unfortunately we don't know when our last day here is so you might as well get everything you can as far as learning and and, and developing yourself get all that you can while you can 
Do you have a favorite quote that you would like to share? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. And it actually kind of fits in with that, <laughs> that advice I was given. The quote said, and I don't know who, who this is by, but the quote says, never give up on something that you can't go a day without thinking about. Never give up on it. If you if you literally cannot go one day without it entering in your mind, then that means you've got to keep chasing it. You got to keep going. So if your if your dream job is to 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 be on TV or be an actor or an actress, and you cannot get that out of your head every single day, then you never need to stop working on it. You need to keep going until you accomplish that goal. And you've been a role model of that exactly. I have. I have. I'm I'm 36 years old. I have a, I've been blessed to have a doctorate degree and I am still in school. <laughs> I'm still chasing more <laughs> because there are some things I can't go without. I can't go more than a day without thinking about. And so as long as God allows me life on this earth, I'm going to keep chasing until I can't chase anymore. So I have a, my big challenge question to you. Okay. <laughs> Imagine that your name changed today. Okay. And you are no longer called Torian. Mm -hmm. And you have to choose a new name <laughs> out of the four that I'm going to give you. Okay. <laughs> Success, mm -hmm. trust, courage, or passion. Mm. Which of these names would you choose and what would change in your life as a result? Passion, easy. E well, I'm not going to say easy. It was between passion and trust. <laughs> but I'm going to go with passion. So your name is Passion. Yeah, it'd be so Passion. passion. How, yeah, yeah. how are you living your life now? What's changing? Everything in my life has changed because I am that much more passionate about everything I do. Whether it's Whether you would consider it a small task, I'm passionate about it. Whether it's picking up a book and reading a chapter, I'm going to read it with as much passion as I can. Whether it's going to meet with a child or a client to coach them on their life, I'm going to do it with every bit of passion I can muster up. And so as a result, my life has changed <clears throat> dramatically because I have now started to do everything in the world with passion. Because that's who you are. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. I've never heard that before. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Torian. Thank yeah, you. thank you. This thank was you. such a great interview, and yeah. I've learned so much from you, and I hope that the audience enjoyed this interview as much as I have. Absolutely. Thank you. And can you tell us where people can find you? Sure thing. Well, let me thank you again, Sophia, for having me and everyone that tuned in. Thank you for your time today as well. You can follow me in a couple of different ways. My personal website is torianesalary.com just just my name and the church website is hillcrest coc stands for church of christ so hillcrestcoc.net and then you can follow me of course on every social media platform facebook instagram youtube all under just search tori and salary and are your sermons online too <clears throat> They are. They are on the Hillcrest website, or you can go to YouTube and either search my name or the church's name. So and we can watch sermon. your life. Yeah, every Woo! sermon that I've ever done for Hillcrest Church of Christ is on YouTube. Quite a few of them. So you, you have to binge watch. There's quite a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll put all the links also in the comments area. Thank you. Below. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. And Professionals, thank you so much for tuning in to our show, The Professionals on Air podcast, a podcast where we discuss how to walk, talk, live, and grow authentically as a professional in the 21st century. If you want to be a featured guest, please send me a direct message. To learn more about Dr. Torian Salary, passion, Mr. Passion, <laughs> visit his website where we'll put the links in the comments below. And finally, what quality do you want to grow in more? Trust, success, passion, or courage? Message me the word of your choice and your email, and I will email it to you together 
with a ritual on how you can grow it to make a positive impact in your business and personal life. And we appreciate your comments and feedback and can't wait to see you next Wednesday where I will introduce you to Arlene Siller, an expert in grant writing, fundraising, and moving money. (laughs) And you definitely don't want to miss that. As always, send us your questions and ciao. Bye.